Do you want to make people like you? Let's explain that. Hey everyone and welcome to Things Explained. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make friends, and a lot of what I'll be talking about comes from the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is one of those well-established, long-standing books, having been in print for over 75 years. However, bear in mind, it's 75 years old. You have six principles to make people like you, so let's get into how these things apply today. The first principle is to become genuinely interested in people. If you're going to learn about making friends, why not learn from man's best friend? At my house, you can usually count on being greeted at the door. Our little dog lays on the couch by the door and is always happy to see you, if she knows you, that is. When it's my dad that gets home, as soon as she hears his car pull in, she starts going crazy. You can tell it's the highlight of her day. As you can probably guess, the typical routine when he gets home is to feed her, rub her belly, and let her snuggle up with his warm body. This dog knows how to use a man. Think about it, why do we let dogs just live and take up space in our houses? Because they appreciate us. They know that we'll take care of them if they give us attention. That's not necessarily a bad thing to imitate in looking for friends. When we find someone who gives us genuine interest, it's usually a good sign that they will take care of us, at least socially. The second principle is simple. Smile. Making a good impression takes both internal and external qualities. One good way to get attention is to be really attractive. Well, some people may have been doomed from the start. But everyone can control their smile. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, the first thing people see in you is that picture. Having a good smile will give you a head start on making a good first impression. When I was little, everybody loved me. At that point in life, my dashing good looks and knack for sweet talking hadn't quite kicked in, but I was always smiling. Every now and then I'll see someone I hadn't seen since I was eight or so, and their impression of me is always that of a smiling little angel. Number three is to remember that everyone's favorite word is their own name. This is the hardest principle for me, probably because it has the word remember in it. That's really the key to this principle, remembering people's names. You know that feeling when you're in a crowd and you see someone and they look towards you and start waving? You don't recognize them, but you start waving back. Then that person walks to someone behind you and starts talking. This is a regular occurrence in my life. Imagine that same thing, but the person yells, Hey James! and then starts waving. This will give you much more validation if your name is James. Mine isn't, so that would still be weird for me. People like the validation of hearing their own name. It's like a little bit of confirmation that this conversation is actually happening and the other person knows who you are. Principle 4 is to listen to others when they talk about themselves. For some people, talking takes a lot of energy and effort, but others find it as a great release, so it's really a give and take. It's kind of like running. For example, my girlfriend feels so much better after going for a run, whereas I feel like all happiness has been sucked out of my soul. I'm really good at letting people talk, mostly because dominating the conversation is too exhausting. Now I just need to work on listening to what they say. I like to think I'm halfway there. Number five is to talk in terms of the other person's interests. Everybody likes what they like and there's really no changing that, which makes it easier to talk about what you like and know. Every now and then I'll run across someone who just talks incessantly about some random thing. The hard part about these conversations is I don't even know enough about the subject to even transition to something I want to talk about. When this happens I usually try to avoid further conversations with that person, which kind of makes it hard to be friends with them. The last principle is to make others feel important. Dale Carnegie tells a story about how he met a man in the post office who appeared to be bored of his job. Dale thought carefully about how he could genuinely compliment him, and finally said, I sure wish I had your head of hair. He explains that the demeanor of the man changed, and he appeared to have much higher spirits. Our minds can be a dark, scary place when left alone. When we see someone else make even a small gesture to shed some light and help us feel important, it makes a really good impression. So there you have it. These are the six principles. Keep in mind these will only work if you actually care about becoming friends with people. Fakeness bleeds through any disguise you put on. How have you made friends in new circumstances? Leave a comment below, and if you learned something be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends who don't have any friends. Don't think too hard about that. If you have any questions you would like to explain, check out my Facebook page and leave a post there, and I may even give you a shout out if I pick your question.